Good evening and welcome to tonight's presentation on counterfeit and fake coins. Yes, there is a difference between counterfeit and fake coins, but I will probably get lazy and use the terms interchangeably. Counterfeit coins are those coins that are produced to mimic original, authentic coins and be passed as such. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bill Chapman. And for those of you who do, my name is still Bill Chapman. <laughs> I've been a metal detectorist for 60 years. Oh, man. And a member of the Eureka Club for half that time. Over those years, I have found thousands of things, both good and bad. But in 1996, I had a find of the lifetime and was presented with the Find of the Year Award by Western Eastern Treasure Magazine for finding the most valuable reported find in the country. That's, that was my claim to fame in my 15 minutes. <laughs> Many of you, it was a hundred gold eagles. Many of you first knew me through my business, Golden Detectors, the metal detecting and prospecting center located in Golden. What you may not know about me that was that Golden Detectors was a retirement business. Before Golden Detectors, I had a real job. I, I was a deputy sheriff and criminalist with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department. And those of you who may not be familiar with the term criminalist, a criminalist is a person who applies scientific knowledge and techniques to analyze physical evidence at and from crime scenes. You see this on TV with the CSI shows. A criminalist is looking for the who, what, where, when, and how crimes were committed. The why is the province of the criminologist. Those are the, the, the head people. So my training in materials analysis kind of makes me uniquely qualified to speak on authenticity of coins, because all we're doing is comparison and metals analysis. Tonight, I would have been assisted by Joyce Keith, who is unfortunately under the weather, Ken King running the audio-visual, and Craig was going to help fill in for Joyce, but he's got an, an iPhone and Joyce has an Android, and so that screwed up the whole program. <laughs> but we tried. And of course, we have the sound system. How many of you have seen the latest Indiana Jones movie, The Dial of Destiny? One person? <laughs> Jeez, thanks for watching, Tommy. <laughs> well, The Dial of Destiny was a really exciting movie. And probably more exciting than this presentation is going to be, but we have one of the co-stars of that movie that will be featured in this presentation later on tonight. And he will give us the benefit of his wisdom. At most other meetings, we ask you to silence your phones, as Jeff has done. Through the newsletter, though, I ask you to bring your phones tonight because you are going to become part of the presentation and your iPhone is going to become part of that presentation. Owing to the length and timing of tonight's program, now complicated by audio program problems, I will ask that you hold your questions, any applause and financial benefits <laughs> or rotten tomatoes that you may want to toss his way until the end of the presentation. At this time, would someone please turn off the lights and we will start the same presentation. Sorry, Did you turn on the power on the side of that? I got laser, so I must have. All right, tonight's presentation is going to be on fake coins. They are out there. The country is being inundated with fake coins by the thousands. 
you may say, well, what's that got to do with me? What I find are legitimate coins. How do you know? Everything from the nickel up is being faked and coming from China. <coughs> well, now here's another thing that's not working, that was working. <coughs> All right. Tell them a joke. <laughs> Song and dance. A little salsa in your pants? Yeah, a little salsa, maybe. <laughs> salsa. <laughs> no, we did rehearse this. We did test it all before the meeting started. Of course, it doesn't work once the meeting begins and the lights turn on. Get your hands off that. Stop that, you fool. <laughs> So you mentioned that uh, the counterfeit coins were, in essence, trying to fake the real one. What's the fake coin? It is legitimate, as you will see as we go on in the program. It is perfectly legal for you to duplicate coinage. Perfectly legal. And there are applications of some coins that make it more legal than others, and those are fake or tribute coins. They're not meant to be. Are we ready? Thank you. If you are a collector of bullion coins in particular, but coins in general, there's an expression you should be aware of. It's in Latin and it is in caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. I have altered this just a little bit for tonight's presentation to caveat fetus Q repertoire. Let the finder beware. And that is you. I first became aware of these fake coins coming in to the store when I had a store 10, 12, maybe 15 years ago. Morgan silver dollars had Silver trade dollars are coming into the store. People would buy them at the Mile High Flea Market and say, are you buying these? <laughs> Not those, because <laughs> they're fake. Well, how do you know? Well, the silver dollars are highly ferromagnetic. The magnet would stick to them. So they were easy to tell. And they were not very good counterfeits. They were poor quality. The trade dollars were a little better. But who knows why that's a fake trade dollar? Wrong design. Right. Jeff is the only person who knows, besides me, who knows trade dollars. Well, this is, a this is a fake trade dollar because the trade dollar wasn't made until 1873. That's an 1872 date. It couldn't be real. And the wrong design, the obverse, the back, or reverse, it doesn't look anything like the reverse of a leg legitimate trade dollar. But you can duplicate coins as tribute coins so long as the word copy appears on the coin. In this instance, the top row, these are legal copies. And you can see why this, all of this is up here on the table. There are only two legitimate coins on that table. Everything else is counterfeit or fake. Those below are counterfeit. They are designed to replicate authentic coins. The most commonly counterfeited coin in America today is the Silver Eagle, a one ounce bullion coin from the U.S. Mint. And I captured 10 websites that are all selling fake eagles. How do you know, and that includes eBay and Etsy, how do you know those are fake coins? Just by looking at the picture, how do you know? Well, the picture doesn't tell you anything. It's the price. When I captured this back in April, silver was $28 an ounce. These are all being sold at about $25. How could a person sell authentic silver eagles 
for less than the spot price of, of the metal and rain truck and include free shipping. And when you buy a Silver Eagle, you pay spot price plus a premium. And the premium on the Eagle is about $8. So at the time this was posted, the Eagle was selling for about $36 from a dealer. Paying $24.95, something's wrong with that picture. Now the United States Treasury know that there are some problems with, with this coin, as it's so widely faked. So in 1921, they made some major changes to the Silver Eagle. They changed the font. They added a, whoops, sorry. They added a serif to the U of the United States. Well, that'll catch your attention, won't it? Now, how many of you knew that? And know to look for it? None of us did. They changed the font size, making the date skinnier or thinner than a counterfeit. Again, how many of us know that? None of us. If you don't have a legitimate coin to compare to, you wouldn't know. The latest security feature called a read variation or security chip or security notch a reed has been milled out of the uh, rim of the coin, and the position of that notch tells the holder the date that that coin was produced. This is a 1923, by the way, and it is in the, pardon? Product, yeah, 1923, and it is in the 11 o'clock position. Next year, the 2024 coin will have that notch in a different position. Is that doing anything to stop the counterfeiters? No. 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 Where's the notch? On the reeded edge. This is the this is the edge of the coin, from reverse to obverse. That's just the thickness of the coin shown there. So. The Silver Eagle being the most counterfeited coin in America, when this appeared on the fines table, I went, hmm, I wonder if that's real or not. Well, George, who was sitting there in the dark, who was lucky enough to find this, believed it to be real, entered it as find of the month. People at the table believed it to be real. No offense to the people at the fines table, but they didn't have the tools to test it to see if it was authentic or not. So it passed as, as a real coin. Tonight, at the end of the presentation, George is going to come up with his coin. We're going to test it and see. How do you know? How can you tell if the coin is genuine or not? In order of least expensive to most expensive way to test, uh, well, almost that way. The easiest way for you to test the coin to see if it's real is to spend $1,700 and buy a precious metal verifier. It'll definitely tell you if that coin is real or not. In this case, it says it's a silver coin and it's 99.99% pure. That's a great little device. The club doesn't have one. I don't have one. Anybody here got a PMP? No. But there are tools that we can get that will allow us to do this authentication. Will teach me how to speak. And a basic tool set will run you $80, $85. But the cheapest and most readily available tool you have at your disposal are your senses. Look at the coin handle it, and listen to it as you drop it on a hard surface. By looking at it, here's what I would like for you all to do. Reach into your pocket, or purse, Jeff, and pull out a coin, a U.S. coin. And if you don't have one, borrow one from your neighbor so you can look at the obverse, that's the face side of the coin, right side up in your hand. 
Even in the dark, you'll be able to, to see. And remember, that coin you borrowed from your neighbor is not yours to keep. Everybody got a coin in front of them? Right side up, face up. Flip the coin top to bottom so you're looking at the reverse. If you flip the U.S. coin top to bottom, the reverse will be right side up if the obverse had been right side up. Counterfeiters don't seem to know that yet. <laughs> Not all of them. I have nine silver eagles up here. Nine different dates, all are counterfeit. Now, by the way, if you get coins that are slabbed or encapsulated, that should be a red flag to you. Flip that one top to bottom, John. It's upside down. That's, that's the quickest, cheapest, and easiest way to determine if a U.S. coin is genuine or not. But that's only one of six tests. The second is a magnet test, and there are two different magnets we use. A simple super magnet or neodymium magnet, and then a large field of magnets called a magnet slide. The use of these tools will be demonstrated in video in just a bit. Then we want to weigh it using either a digital scale or a beam balance and get its physical dimensions in millimeters with a caliper, thickness and diameter. And how do we know what the weight, thickness and diameter should be? We use our reference books. In this case, the Red Book or U.S. Uh, United States Coins book. All of the information, weight, thickness, and diameter will be found for every coin in circulation and out of circulation. The fifth test is one of specific gravity. In addition to one of the two weighing devices, you need a container of water. And the last is the ping test. This is a coin pinger. This is a very nice device, but it can only be really used in conjunction with a smartphone. Now, I'm old school. I don't have a smartphone. I don't even have a dumb phone. Oh, oh uh, Mary Ann loaded the, the software. You're going to fill in for, yeah. for Joycey? Well, that'll be later, Marianne, but thank you. Yeah, I think Joyce called Marianne and had her set her phone up to do this. What it does is turn your telephone into an audio spectrum analyzer. Every coin, because of the metal alloy, the diameter, thickness, and surface texture can be identified by the sound it emits. Not just the primary frequency, but the harmonics as well. And that is the most expensive of the six tests. These are the coin ping applications. And you really don't need to buy the coin pinger. You can put the coin on the tip of the finger and wrap it with a pencil or a pen and get the same result. But in the end, you will probably end up picking that coin up off the ground somewhere. That coin payer gives you good control. So in order, from simplest to most complicated, census magnet, weight, dimensions, gravity, specific gravity, and pin test. No one test is good to authenticate the coin unless it's a precious metal verifier. You must do all six tests, you do them in order, and if at any point down the list it fails, it's bogus. Okay, there's going to be a science lesson. There's got to be a science lesson. Since we're using magnets as our second test, you kind of need to know something about magnetism. Most of us think that magnetism is simply, it is or is not magnetic. But that 
that's not the case. There are different forms of magnetism. What we think of as magnetic is known as ferromagnetism. There are three metals that exhibit ferromagnetic properties, iron, cobalt, and nickel. They will retain magnetism, they will make permanent magnets, and they attract <coughs> other magnetic, what we call magnetic items. But if you remember your chemistry in the periodic table, those three elements are right there on that same period of the periodic table. Those are the only ones that are ferromagnetic. But another form of magnetism, diamagnetism, is exhibited by copper, silver, and gold. Because of the paired electrons in the outer shells of these elements, they resist magnetic fields. And that's why they're used in watch cases, to keep magnetic fields from getting to the ferromagnetic parts inside the watch case. That causes the watch to lose time. Those elements are in the same period of the periodic table, or family, copper, silver, gold, and zinc also is diamagnetic. We can tell these apart using the magnet slide, not the simple magnet, and that will be demonstrated here shortly. Paramagnetism exhibited by metals such as aluminum, titanium, and nickel. And the reason this is important to know is that titanium <coughs> has a density nearly that of gold. It is commonly used to fake gold coins because it gives you the weight that you need for a good fake. But it's paramagnetic. It reacts differently on the slide than a uh, diamagnetic metal should. So aluminum, titanium, and nickel are the paramagnetic metals. And in the periodic table, they're scattered all over. There's, there's no connectivity between them. So we're going to watch a quick video. The magnet slide is a, is a small item. And for me to do that demonstration here, uh, four of you, maybe five, could see it. So we made a video of it, and Ken's going to run that video now. One of the simplest, easiest, and least expensive tests for coin authenticity is the application of a magnet to the coin. In this case, we're using a small neodymium or supermagnet, which will demonstrate whether the coin has ferromagnetic properties or not, as this nail has. Not only that, it is ferromagnetic, it retains ferromagnetism after the magnet is removed. Of these test targets, a plastic poker chip is non-magnetic. This $10 gold piece exhibits ferromagnetic property and therefore cannot be genuine. This copper round, silver eagle, half dollars, dimes, one cent coins, aluminum tax token, and silver dollar all pass the simple magnet test. But another tool that can not only tell us whether an item exhibits ferromagnetic properties or not, but can tell us which of the other forms of magnetism the metal is. A non-magnetic substance like these poker chips fall right down the slide of magnets. Whereas a genuine American silver eagle being diamagnetic will be slightly repelled because of the paired electrons in its outer shell and slide slowly down the slide. Mm. I would point out again these are not camera tricks. This is physical, chemical properties. 
copper round, diamagnetic, slides the same way apparently as silver. But because copper and silver have different numbers of electrons paired in their outer shells, they slide at different rates. Though both are diamagnetic, copper always beats silver to the bottom of the slide. Size of the coin doesn't matter. Plaid dime, silver dime, copper always beats silver to the bottom of the slide. Zinc, being diamagnetic but differently than copper, has yet fewer paired electrons in its outer shell and always beats copper to the bottom of the slide. So it would be easy to compare a question coin to a known common coin for diamagnetic properties. Gold is often faked by plating tungsten, a very heavy paramagnetic metal, with gold. A gold coin would act just like the silver and copper coins did, but this aluminum coin, uh, token being paramagnetic, is slightly attracted to the slide because of the unpaired electrons in its outer shell, and it slides smoothly and evenly down the slide. A fake gold coin made of tungsten would react in that manner. And finally, the silver dollar, which passed the simple magnet test, the magnet slide shows that it exhibits ferromagnetic tendencies, therefore cannot be genuine. In short, the magnet is a very simple and effective way of determining coin authenticity, but authenticity should not be dependent upon one test alone. Other tests should be applied. Back to the slides, please. Were you amazed? Yes. 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 That is a great tool. That is one of the funnest tools I've ever found. And uh, Joyce and I found it independently when we were researching counterfeiting coins and how to test them. She made some, and I made one. Are you made? Yeah, yeah, I built that magic nice slide. Then we do the physical measurements using calipers and balances. Oh, I got ahead of myself. Sorry. I ask you how many of you saw the, the movie. It doesn't matter. Only Tony would know. <laughs> Co-starring in that movie was my old friend Archimedes from Syracuse. Yeah, we kind of went to school together. <laughs> Archimedes was a mathematician from a family of mathematicians, an engineer, an inventor, uh, astronomer. Uh, math was his big thing. But he was given a problem by the king to see if a crown that he had had made was genuine gold or if the goldsmith had substituted a cheaper metal for it with the gold. And Archimedes had no idea how to do this. But one day in the bath, the realization came to him that when he got in, water spilled over the side of the bath. And the amount of water that spilled over the side of the bath, the weight of that water, was equal to the buoyant force that he was feeling. Now, this was a breakthrough moment, this was an aha moment. And he shouted, Eureka! And gave us our club name. <laughs> but he did more than that. He stepped out of the bath and went down the streets of Syracuse without clothing. And, uh, Shouting Eureka, I found it, found it. And yes, the goldsmith had substituted a cheaper metal in place of some of the gold. The king had him executed. Not Archimedes, the goldsmith. 
Archimedes gave us this principle. Yeah. An object immersed in water is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the water displaced. He gave us so much more than just this. Today, we know this effect as specific gravity. Well, that's what it was when I learned it. Now it's known as specific density. And it's always referenced, almost always referenced to the weight of water. Mathematically expressed, it's the weight of the substance in the air divided by the weight of the amount of water it displaces. So I would ask that you take out your phones at this time. You're going to become part of this. It, it, any phone that has a calculator function, and I assume they all do, I wouldn't know because I don't have one. The air weight of this silver round is 31.34 grams. Now, if we tie a string around that and immerse it in a container of water, which is then placed on the scale and set to zero, when we immerse that coin in that water, it's going to give us the weight of the displaced water. Why do you have to use a string? Because if you just drop it in the water, you're weighing the coin. It has to be suspended in the water. And in the water, this coin weighs 2.88 grams. What does that math work out to on your calculator? Ah, now here's your aha moment. Ask your Siri or Google device what metal has a specific gravity of 10.5. You go ahead and talk to it. To do that, You'll need to turn. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, does someone have an answer? What metal has a specific gravity of 10.5? Silver. Silver. Silver is a specific gravity of 10.5. How do I know that? I don't have one of those. I use a handbook of chemistry and physics. Question. Aren't most coins made of multiple metals? Alloys? Yes. The silver eagle that we tested is 0 .99.99 silver. So we're looking for a specific gravity of silver. Coin, metal would be slightly different. It's slightly less. But we know what that is too. In the handbook of chemistry and physics, it tells me <coughs> sorry. It tells me that silver has a specific gravity of 10.5, gold of 19.3. And by the way, titanium or tungsten. Nineteen. Gold is 19.3. And that's why tungsten is commonly used to fake gold coins. Because it'll pass weight. It's close enough. But it won't pass the magnet slide. The thing that my book will give me that your phone will not are the common commercial alloys specific gravity. So I can not only see that it's not real, but what it's probably made of. And the new standard is the coin ping test. This is an application that turns your phone into an audio spectrum analyzer. And this device holds the coin securely while you wrap it with, with the wooden mallet. But again, you don't have to have that device. You can use your fingertip and a pen or a pencil to do this. And Joyce was going to demonstrate that for us. But planning ahead, we have Joyce on video.
Would you run that video, please, Ken? All right. All right, there it is. Hi, Since the beginning of coinage, people, especially merchants, noted that those coins made of precious metals, both silver and gold, produced a unique ringing sound. With the introduction of the cash register machine in 1879, a stone sill was incorporated with the machine to allow merchants to drop coins onto it to listen for the ring of precious metals. Fast forward to today, and a more accurate, science-based acoustic test is available to those who own a smartphone. Only three years ago, an application was developed to measure and graph the frequency of the ring from a coin. Compare it and the resident harmonics to known authentic coins and produce a positive identification. Given the precision with which coins are manufactured today, the metal alloy, thickness, diameter, and surface texture of each type of coin can be identified positively to exclusion of all others. The use of a coin pinger is not actually required, but this device makes the testing much easier and more reliable. This is an authentic American Silver Eagle, which rings primarily at 3,800 hertz and produces a number of harmonics. For our test, we turn on the application, which I already have done, hold the real coin with the coin pinger near the phone's microphone, and strike the edge of the coin. Right away it says American Eagle Detected. Now this is the fake coin. Oh, I just lost my application here. <coughs> The same test can be done with the fake coin. We turn on the app. And now it says it is not recognized. Now, as we have already seen, the American Silver Eagle is the application is in the application's database. And therefore, this item which appears to be a silver eagle, cannot be authentic. Mm. Okay. We have the lights back on, please. Thank you, Joyce. Hope you're feeling better tonight. Now the next presenter, part of this presentation, is going to be George Brimberg, the finder of the American Silver Eagle back in April. George, would you come join us? Yes, it does. Yes. Okay, so that passes. Passes, okay. All right. Dated edge? Well, yours doesn't have a rated edge because of its date. That's kind of oh, it does have a notch? No, no notch. Oh, uh, no, it's then it's, it predates the, that security feature. Oh, okay. So we'll skip that. Okay, so All right, I'll use the simple magnet. Does it exhibit ferromagnetic properties? No. So it passes that. Okay. Now the magnet slide. Uh oh. Oh, crap. It does exhibit diamagnetic properties. So that's a pass. So I use the caliber, measure its thickness, and its diameter. And we could look it up in the red book, but I already took that information out and have it on the card here for George. The thickness. Oh, the thickness? Thickness should be around 2.6. 2.9? 2.7? That's close. That's they don't have to be exact, but it does need to be close. It's most dangerous if it's shallow, if it's shy. Okay, okay and diameter? Well, I guess I got that in the wrong spot. 40.4 or 40.5? Yep, 40.5. That is correct. 
So far, everything is passed. So he's going to have to get that dime way. back in one. <laughs> 31 on five. 17, now, 31, 16. What should one ounce of silver weigh in grams? 31 point something. 31.1. Yeah. That's, that's ideal. This is. 31.16. This is very close, 31.16. So that's a pass. Okay. Now take the coin off. Put the beaker on. Put the beaker on the scale. Zero the scale by hitting the T button. That stands for tear. Last of your coin with this hangman's noose. It's not really a hangman's noose, it's just a floss. <laughs> I like to use dental floss because it's waxed fiber and it doesn't absorb water. Not fast enough for rolling. Oh, no, go we'll, we'll across the coin. Not around the coin, across the coin. Oh, I was trying to get it. Okay. Yeah, just like that. And it's a slip knot, so, so it's this is the hardest part of specific gravity, is getting the coin suspended. All right, you've got zero on the balance. Is this good? Yeah, I think it's a little Just say zero. Okay. Okay. Just put it in. Put it in. So two ninety seven, two point nine seven. I don't have a smartphone. I don't even have a smart calculator. I just entered the number incorrectly. <laughs> There's your news. And the last thing is the pig test. Marianne, are you all ready? Yeah. This would have been Joyce's part. Marianne has kindly agreed to fill in here. Here's the pig tester. Trying to center the, the, the coin in the problems. Silver eagle. Sure, ask Bill. Authentic ego detected. Yeah. 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 Thank you, George. And congratulations, your coin is genuine. So you did win the coin yeah. finding yeah. month in English. Yeah. This this would have been a real party yeah. problem. Well, at least we know it's real. real. Yeah. So that might be fraud. <laughs> At this time, do we have any questions? Dave? If you take that same coin and it's been out in the field and worn, is it going to test the same? Yes. It will test the same specific gravity? There will be, the specific gravity will be right on if it gets because it has lost mass, but it has retained the, the density. If, it, if it's thinner, will it go down the magnet slide the same? Yes. Okay. The caliper so, would be the only how, one that would be The caliper off. Could, could be off a bit because it would be less thick. How about the ping test? The ping test, it will probably pass. What because the ping test is based on the uh, metal Russell's. composition, the thickness, diameter, and surface texture. Now, if that's worn off, it's going to vary, and it may fail on the ping test. What if it's bent? I don't know. <laughs> It, I know it won't go down the magnet slide, I've tried to bend coin. So you had to build the magnet slide, those aren't available? Or what? They are available, but I can build them cheaper than I can buy them. 
Do they have to be at a specific angle? I have it at 45 degrees because that seemed to be the optimal angle on the slide. And where would one purchase said magnets? What you should ask. <laughs> the same place that Bill's I purchased second job. many of these 40 coins. China? China. <laughs> From this, web, from this website right here. They gave me some cards to hand out. There you are. You can buy those, take your magnet slide, and just have a whale of a good time testing coins. Any other questions? Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. Did you say it was legal to, to produce a, a fake coin? Absolutely. And you can put it into General population. It, it'll have the word copy on it. Well, why is that legal? I mean, but I can't produce a paper dollar bill. Yes, you can. It's, 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 it's okay to do that too? I got well, printed on almost the whole thing. I have a hundred dollar bill here. <laughs> bill has a bill. That he'll sell for 50. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, he spent it already at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that that's a fake $100 bill? It's just copies. No. Does it say not legal? It no, it says. Motion picture. For movie purposes only. All the money you see in films and movies and television is money that's been made to look like good currency and coins. And by the way, I have a whole box of fake $20 gold pieces up here. They look really good, but I wanted to have enough $20 gold pieces I could sit in the poker game and play for a while. <laughs> Oh, each of these fake coins was less than $3. What type of magnets did you use over your slide? They're neodymium magnets. Uh, and I have another slight question. Is On the slide, too? Is the rate of descent constant? With a particular coin, the rate of descent is constant. It doesn't speed up or slow down. But different metals slide at different rates. And this no, is I, I guess between coins, so uh, half dollar and a quarter. Is it, is it the mass then that causes it to go faster? No, no, the mass won't change it. You can do that. I have uh, half dollars uh, and dimes, but you can pull a quarter out of your pocket and, and test the half dollar against your quarter and see. By the way, the quarter, that you have in your pocket will be 100% copper with a nickel clad, uh, copper nickel cladding on it, which doesn't affect the magnet slide. Where did they make our dollar coins? You have to look that up in the red book because they, I mean, they, they look gold, but majority when copper. When I went to the store, I had a hundred dollar bill. The lady just a marker or a pen. Yes. A test for the paper type. The counterfeiters have found a way to get around that marker pen by spraying the paper money that they make with hairspray. It'll pass, it'll pass the pen test. I also do a class on paper currency counterfeiting. No, you made a comment about the certified or the encased needles. encapsulated or yes. slab? Yes. Why? Why did you say that th those are a kind of a, a giveaway that they're fake? That that's two red flags right off the bat. One, it's from China. They're not graded. And secondly, it's slabbed or encapsulated. They do that to make it difficult for us to apply any of the tests okay. to the coin they're selling. So it's not a graded, it's not authenticated, it's just encapsulated. And even some of the graded authenticated coins come in counterfeit PGS and NGC slabs. Oh, yeah. So they, they have gotten 
really, really resourceful. We're going to be well, busy. Thank you for your time and attention tonight. I hope this was a good <laughs> Thank you for your help tonight. George, your participation. Marianne. Marianne, almost. Oh, wow, I forgot. Craig called me yesterday afternoon. He says, I'm at my favorite pawn shop. I'm trying to get this guy to come to your presentation on fake coins. He says, I got a box of them. He gave Craig this box of fake coins to bring to the meeting tonight so you cool. can see what, yeah, what this right. coin shop has bought. I'm telling you, they're out there. They're out there by the thousands. And coin shops are buying them. Huh? And coin shops are buying them. Coin shops are getting food with them. Pawn shops. Anyway, Craig's going to put that up on the table during the break. Uh, and thank all of you for your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. I hope you guys learned something. I consider myself fairly well educated on coins since I've been collecting since I've probably been eight years old or so. I learned some good stuff tonight that I had no idea. So I learned a lot.